What's up, everybody? Justin here, back with a new fantasy booking. A new fantasy booking. I'm excited to book this, and it's happening in about uh, 20 days. We are 20 days away from AEW's Double or Nothing. I'm excited for it. I'll be watching it. I'll be tweeting it. I'll be doing our predictions and a review on it. I'm excited for it. Because uh it's uh it's different. It's an alternative to the WWE. That's why I'm excited for it. And they got a lot of good talent. So here we go. Fantasy booking of AEW's double or nothing. So up first, we saw what uh, John Moxley did on Twitter. On his Twitter account, he put out a video of him breaking out of jail. Is that like saying he's uh, breaking out of a breaking out of the WWE jail? I don't know what he was trying to say. Basically, he's trying to say he's like a free agent. And he's going back to his roots as John Moxley. He was even chased out of the yard. He was chased by a big dog. Was the big dog supposed to be Roman Reigns? I don't know, but John Moxley's back. The guy's going to start taking a, a lot of bookings from probably everywhere very soon. Do I expect him to show up at double or nothing? Uh, yes, I do. But this is fantasy booking. And I got John Moxley in his uh, first pay-per-view match for a different company that is not WWE for the first time in like six years. He's been in WWE a long time. So John Moxley. Makes his AEW debut. If you don't know who he is, uh, I don't know where have you been. You're probably living under a rock. If you did not see that video he put out on his Twitter account. A very well produced video. Was it produced by WWE? I doubt it. And I'm going to just say it. He's not going back to WWE. I doubt it. But, I mean, I, I, in wrestling, in the wrestling business, never say never, I guess. It's like a small, small chance he could go back to WWE, but I doubt it. Because John Moxley is not PG. He would not fit. In the PG era, in my opinion. I think he very badly wanted out of the company and out of the PG era. The guy was just uh, super frustrated that he couldn't, that they probably kept turning down all his ideas for creative and it is bad. Uh, Dean Ambrose, the guy who's a good talker, good worker in WWE. Big star in WWE, but he was a PG, watered-down version of uh, John Moxley. So John Moxley, I have booked on Double or Nothing, John Moxley against Jimmy Havoc. It is a extreme death match. Both of the guy, both of these guys bleed a lot during it. It's a bloodbath, and uh, John Moxley wins his AEW debut on pay per view. So now let's go to the AEW uh, tag team titles. Now they haven't an announced any titles, except for I think. Uh, North American title that looks like it's a tribute to Mid-South Wrestling. I believe it has like 
the Mid-South uh, Wrestling logo on the championship belt, I think. But anyways, I'm going to book the AEW Tag Team titles to be on the line. The Young Bucks, the winner, gets the tag titles. And will be the first ever AEW Tag Champs. The Young Bucks against the Lucha Bros. Lucha Bros, Pentagon Jr. and Ray Phoenix. Lucha Bros, Young Bucks for the AEW Tag Titles I got. And then, by the way, it is a Texas Tornado match. Texas Tornado rules, no tags, all four guys in the ring and can go at it. I got the Lucha Bros winning the Lucha Bros, your first ever AEW Tag Champ. Up next, let's go with the Over the Budget Battle Royal. I got people in there like uh, Joey Janela. He signed AEW. Ray Phoenix. Let him have a second matchup of the night. He'll work twice. Uh, Sonny Kiss. I'll put him in there. Tommy Dreamer. Diamond Dallas Page. Ace Romero. I forget her first name, but uh, I forget her first name, but she's a, a transgender wrestler, I think, the first ever, or maybe there's more than one, I don't know, and uh, it's not for me to judge anybody that does a trans transition. From male to female or female to male. I don't care. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't bother me. It's their life. They can do what they want. They are human beings like everybody else. They bleed red like, like you, like everybody else. And my views on uh, transgender people or wrestlers, they're born that way. In my opinion, they were born that way. They were born feeling trapped in a different body. That's my opinion about it. And again, they shouldn't get hate. They should not get hatred on the internet or in real life. They shouldn't get hated on because they are humans like everybody else. I always say it. They're humans. They're not bothering anybody. They're not affecting you if you're against it. They're not affecting you at all by transitioning. And uh, you're just, you're hateful scum if you don't accept people of all different races, religions, different genders, whatever. You're just scum if you don't accept them. In the wrestling. So uh, I forget her first name. But I believe her last name is Rose. So uh, I'm not being disrespectful by calling her the transgender wrestler. I'm sorry. That's what, that's what she is known for. In my opinion. Her, I, I believe that's why AEW signed her. Because they wanted to be ahead of the curve. And... Give everybody, any race, gender, different, religion, gay, straight, transgender, bi, lesbian. I think AEW is going to give everybody a chance in their company. I don't ever see WWE hiring a transgender wrestler. I just don't. Maybe they will in someday and they should. So uh, she's in there. Rose. I'll just call her Rose. She's in the over the budget battle royal. Because she is big and she looks uh, damn tough. Like she could beat up any guy on the roster. So who wins the over the budget battle royal? I have Ace Romero. Ace Romero wins the over the budget battle royal. He's like a super heavyweight. If you've never seen him, I've seen him in House of Hardcore. And, and uh, let's see, I've seen him in House of Hardcore, MLW, and 
I think somewhere else. Maybe is that all in? I don't really remember. But Ace Romero, the super heavyweight, the guy's really agile and a pretty good athlete for being like 350 or 400. So Ace Romero wins the over the budget battle royal up next for the AEW TV title. Yes, I have AEW having a TV title. I think they should. I think it'd be a good idea. AEW's TV title on the line. The winner is the first ever AEW TV champion. Formerly Neville. Now he's Pac. Pac up against Hangman Page for the AEW TV title. Pac wins and it's your first AEW TV champion is Pac. Up next, we got uh, the AEW uh, women's title. AEW women's title again. The winner is the first ever AEW women's champion in this match. It's a six six way women's match for the AEW women's title. Winner is crowned the first ever AEW women's champion. It's a six way matchup. Brie Presley, she's a great talent. She is fucking great. If you've never seen her work, look her up on YouTube and Stardom and other companies. She's damn good. I believe she's uh, dating or engaged or dating uh, Will Offspring. Brie Presley, by the way, like three, four years ago or five years ago, she had a brain tumor. And she beat it. That's awesome. Or I think is maybe it's brain cancer. Or maybe a brain tumor. I'm not sure. But she beat it and became a professional wrestler. Bree Presley's in this match. She's signed to AEW. I'm a big fan of her. Because she's really good. I've seen her a lot in uh, stardom. And she's really good. Allie. Left Impact, Allie signed with AEW. Allie's great. So uh, I got Brie Presley, Allie, Britt Baker's in this. The engaged of Adam Cole, baby, is Britt Baker. She's a dentist slash uh, pro wrestler. Penelope Ford, really good talent. I've seen her a lot. Not in person, I'm talking about on video. I've seen her, and she's really good. Hakira. Oh, I'm going to have trouble saying her last name. Hakira Sad Sadata. Anyway, she's really good. Look her up on uh, YouTube. I've seen her before in uh, Shimmer. And... I'm not sure if she worked for Stardom, but she's worked a lot of places. Shimmer for uh, Japanese companies. I, I saw her in a mixed tag on YouTube. Uh, it was Hakira and uh, Kenny O. Or no, Hakira and Masato Tanaka took on Kenny Omega and Asuka. As are Asuka's Kana then. That was a pretty fun match to watch. So, uh, anyways, Masato Tanaka used to be in ECW, and the guy's really skinny now and looked pretty ripped. I barely recognized him. So, uh, again, if I say her name wrong, I apologize. Hakira Sadata. It's uh, H I K A R U S H. IDA. So look her up on YouTube. Put her name in. A whole bunch of her matches pop up. So right there, that's six women. Hakira, Penelope Ford, Britt Baker, Allie, Bree Presley, and the final woman, uh, Kayla, I think it's pronounced Kayla Ray. Not Kaylee Ray. She's in NXT UK. Kayla Ray. I believe she's trained by Booker T. 
I think, in his uh, wrestling school, trained by Booker and maybe Stevie Ray. I'm not sure, but Kayla Ray. She's really good. She's young. I believe she's only like, I believe she's under 25. She has a really bright future. Very cute girl. Uh, reminds me of Bailey. Really reminds me of Bailey a lot is uh, Kayla Ray. I've seen her work on video and she's damn good in the ring. And AEW signed her. Good move by them. AEW also signed uh, Akira. That's a great move. I don't know if she'll be full time, but I hope she is. And uh, Pen Penelope Ford, Britt Baker, Ali, Bree Presley, they're all signed to AEW. Now the winner of the women's six-way to become the first ever AEW women's champion, Brie Presley wins. I put over Brie Presley. She's your winner and first ever AEW women's champ. Now let's get to the two main event matches. Double main event for double or nothing. This is my fantasy booking for it. Double main event. The first main event. Is Cody against his brother Dustin? Dustin Rhodes, Cody Rhodes. Yeah, I know they're facing off in real life. I liked it so much, I had to book it on my fantasy booking of Double or Nothing. Just a perfect, in my opinion, the absolute perfect opponent for Cody in his first his first match in AEW. I know Cody has a lot of stroke in AEW because he's vice president or something. So I'm all for AEW and Cody bringing in his brother Dustin. The guy's a veteran. The guy could help a ton backstage. He could become an agent or a producer. The guy's a ton of knowledge. Does Dustin Rhodes. The guy's been wrestling since... I believe 89, 1989. So uh, Cody versus Dustin. By the way, this match is a best of five series. This is match number one in the best of five series match number one. And it is, it is first blood. I booked it as a first blood match for match number one. So uh, Dustin wins. I have Dustin Rhodes winning match number one in the best of five. Cody's busted open, bleeding a lot. And during the match, they brawl into the crowd a lot. And Cody gets busted open. Dustin Rhodes wins match number one. And it was first blood in the best of five. Now to the main event. The true main event because it's the final match of the pay-per-view. For the AEW World Heavyweight title. The winner gets the AEW World title. Kenny Omega. Taking on Chris Jericho. Again. I know I stole this match. From the real card. So what? Because I like it. That's why. And I think it's the right match to be the main event. Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho for the AEW World title. The winner will become the first ever AEW World Champion. And I have, in an upset, I don't think it'd be expected, Chris Jericho wins. And now for the next uh, 20 years, Jericho can say, I am the first ever guy that beat The Rock and Stone Cold in the same night. And I'm the first ever AEW World Champion. And he'll probably brag about that for the next 20 years. If that happened. So uh, Chris Jericho wins. I don't care if he's almost 50. The guy would be a good face of the brand as a world champion for a couple months. And then he could drop it in October. On their debut episode on cable. Wherever they are. Hopefully it's on a big cable network. So uh, Kenny Omega, Jericho. Jericho wins and is your first ever AEW World Champion. 
And these two could continue to feud into the summer. As I booked Cody and Dustin, the best of five, I would have them in real life. I would have them continue to feud for a couple months until like November. From May to like November, December, they could feud. They could have like a, I'm talking about in real life, they could have like a trilogy of matches on pay-per-view. It could be great stuff. There's already a built-in story with uh, Cody and Dustin. It is great. And then Double or Nothing is going to be great in real life. Hope you enjoyed my fantasy booking of AEW's Double or Nothing. Again, I'm excited for the real event. I don't want to say because it's a competition for WWE. I don't want to say that. All I want to say is it's uh, an alternative. It's, It's a different product. That's going to be big, a big product. That's going to be big and something uh, really good to watch. That's not WWE. Because WWE uh, is overexposed. I watch a lot of the network, but I don't watch everything. I don't watch 205 Live. I end up skipping it a lot. I only watch NXT, NXT UK, and uh, the pay-per-views, and the Worlds Collide. Other than that, I don't watch any, well, I do watch, uh, what's it called? Ride Along. I watch Ride Along, Table for Three, stuff like that. But I mostly I watch a lot of older wrestling on the network like thunder mid south and uh what else wccw hope you enjoy my fantasy booking for aw double or nothing uh what how would you fantasy book aw's double or nothing tell me in the comments what would be your main event anyways like comment share and subscribe bye for now everybody